What's up, y'all? Um, so I want to talk about um, Russia, right? Because as a progressive, right, you know, and anyone out there who's progressive, you know, obviously we would never support the Russian government. Not because we want war with Russia. It's just that I see a similarity in the corruption that exists in the Russian government and the corruption that did exist and probably still does in the, U- in the U.S. government with respect to, like, organized crime and politics and the military and and uh, covert agencies, of domestic and foreign. You know, in Russia, they have the FSB. I'm not too familiar with the higher agency after that out there in Russia. Over here, we have the FBI. Then we have the CIA, which is more powerful than the FBI um, as far as, you know, international. Um, but what I wanted to bring up was the fact that many people who I usually agree with seem to be defending Russia, right? And I'm, I'm just kind of shocked and I'm not shocked, actually. I'm just shocked that the, the, the people in the YouTube comment section in the past who who probably are not progressive but who defend Russia, right? And I've also heard people defending China, but I just want to stick with Russia. Um... You know, I went, after the fall of the Soviet Union, Russia eventually became our ally before and after Putin, right? There was the invasion of Chechnya. Um, obviously, to defend the Russian government, you, you, you have to, you have to have, be real ignorant about or real stupid about history or real forgetful about the past because um, the invasion of Chechnya was, was, would be considered a war crime. All right, and um, the invasion was based on terror attacks that occurred in Russia, and the evidence which was represented by, you know, authors and whistleblowers who all wrote books and who all been killed, politically assassinated by the Russian government, both inside and outside, that the Russian government staged a lot of these terror attacks. Um, through the FSB and, and probably most likely with the help of the Russian Mafia and then the political assassinations itself which we could talk about forever um, and these are the ones we know because Russia, the Russian government does control the media so a lot of things don't get leaked out and when they do it all of a sudden you don't hear from them again like the anti-war protesters in Russia who I stand by you know I don't see how you can defend the Russian government and then uh, either attack or make fun of the anti-war protesters when I myself were an anti-war protester protesting against the war in terror. Like, I I can never turn my back on those anti-war protesters in Russia. These are anti-war protesters. These are, are people. These are supposed to be... These are progressive people. These are people like me. So, how can I say anything bad about them to defend Putin, to make Putin look good? I mean, if you think Putin is that great, why don't you just... I hate to say it, I don't want to sound like a, a right-wing nut job because I'm not. I'm, I'm, I don't support conservatism at all, although I do, I do believe in forms of it. You know, go to Russia. Don't live here. Live in Russia. See how you like it over there, you know? Uh, so... Then you, you know, after the invasion of Chechnya, you had all these other terror attacks, which a lot of these um, whistleblowers, authors have pointed out, were all staged by the FSB, apartment, the apartment bombings, and um, even going, I would say, I think it was like um, six years ago, uh, the bombs they found on the Russian subway stations, and uh, I believe it was, I don't remember what city it was in. Uh, obviously. Um, they were found. It was it was funny to me, and, and and also as as progressives, we 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 question not only the lockdowns and, and the forced vaccinations and and the pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer, which I've been against for for years, way before the COVID lockdown. 
I, we were also questioning 9-11 because of the evidence of, of incendiary devices that what looks look like and I believe so evidence of you know devices planted in the buildings to to, to bring them down and, and I hate, hate to say it that way because I know a lot of people are sensitive and a lot of people were killed and but that that was a stage of ground for um, the project from New American Century, which led to which which was a plan to create invasion of to invade all these countries, which we kind of did eventually over time under Bush and Obama, and we tried to do it with with Iran, and I, I believe the PPK. Were, were were behind some bombings that took place in 2011 when I was still living in Brooklyn. I remember seeing this in the news, and the PPK is supported by the U.S. government, you know, by the CIA. And um, so, anyway, the reason why I don't support the Russian government is because I see similarities in it with the U.S. government, and. As a progressive, we're not supposed to defend any governments. We're supposed to be anti-authoritarian. That means against authority, against the government, against whatever government we happen to be living under, against any government that's suppressing people around the world. You know, if, if we're going to speak out against the, the U.S. government, our, our own government, and, Saudi, and the Saudi Arabian government, then what, how, how can we defend the Russian government or the Chinese government? It doesn't make sense. The, so Fast forward to the invasion of Ukraine For some reason Everybody Left, right the, There has to be a good guy And a bad guy When it comes to war In my opinion There is no good or bad War is war It's battle over the spoils It's, it's, a, it's the, the ruling rich Wanting to take control Of a particular territory the ruling, the ruling class of both countries wanted to take over a certain territory or, or wanted to protect a certain territory. That's what war is about. And so they, so they can, you know, reap the benefits of controlling that territory. So that's what war has always been about, territory. It's never been about good versus evil. That's, that's Bible stuff. That's, um, well, I, I, yeah, it's... Um, I would say more cartoonish, actually. You know what I'm saying? Like, to think that there's a bad guy and a good guy. Um, you have soldiers who tend to be yes-men, who tend to be patriotic to this country. And that's, I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying most soldiers are yes-men. They, they tell what to do. And the higher-ups are the war criminals. You know, so I don't see any good in either government, the Ukrainian government or the Russian government. It's, it's, it's between them. Uh, we have an interest in def defending Ukraine for territorial reasons, for NATO reasons. But it's not our war, it's not our business. The Ukrainian government that exists now, it was birthed by the Ukrainian government that we put in power, which eventually, you know, which led to an eight year civil war. So it's a right wing government. And the, head, the, the man who ran the special forces in Ukraine is a Nazi. Not new Nazi, he's a Nazi. However, in the, this is where I want I wanted to say, the Russian, in, the, in Russia, the Russian government, Putin, in my opinion, and with the facts show, is a war criminal. He's a war criminal. He benefited from the invasion of Chechnya as well as um, the false flag terrors in Russia. There's, I can't I, I can't remember the, but there's a book about false flag terror, which talks about the false flag terrors that all governments have committed: the U.S., Russia, Spain. So, and you could Google it, but as a you know, I I just don't understand why anybody would want to openly defend the Russian government. <laughs> um, I, I find that kind of laughable. Um, but Putin is a war criminal. I'm against what he did. I'm against the invasion of, of Ukraine by Russia. Uh, a lot of people did die by Russian hands. 
uh, the Russian government are the Russian soldiers are cold. They they they're yes men and they've committed crimes against humanity. They've committed crimes against humanity before, and nobody the people who defend Putin, all these people that supposedly are my are my side, progressive side, are defending. They never bring up uh, Russia's involvement in Africa. Now, all right, but let's let's talk about the political assassinations, right? You have Anna, who um, I forgot her last name. It's hard to be, for me to pronounce Russian names. So, first name was Anna. She was shot and killed in the hotel. I bought both of her books. I bought the first book before she, that she put out before she was killed. Um, I also bought. Um, I think his name was Alex, something. It was two authors that that were involved with this book, and he was poisoned to death. I bought, I bought his book, their book, and. We can go on and on about political assassination. There was a Russian, uh, I think, whistleblower or journalist who was shot and killed over a bridge in Moscow. Um, so, and then we have recently uh, a war criminal who ran Russia's special forces. Um, I, I, I can't can't remember. I should know, but he, he was trying to overthrow Putin. There was a, almost a civil war in Russia. And he was trying to overthrow Putin, and he was he was shot down <laughs> by Russian military. Um, is the world a safer place now that he's dead? Yeah, I, I would say so. Not any le- because of the crimes he committed in Africa, uh, where they were accused of uh, murdering, you know, women and children, uh, rape. Russian soldiers were accused of rape in Chechnya, uh, accused of gang raping women and, and then killing them. And before you say, "Oh, that's that's uh, media over exaggeration," the media barely talked about it, and that's not over exaggeration. That every power, powerful country that has invaded a smaller country has had soldiers who who raped. Women and that includes the U.S. government. Let's not forget what we did in Vietnam. Please do not forget. What we... If you know what we did in Vietnam, then you will understand what happened in Chechnya. Why? Why that vision was wrong. So the Russian soldiers did the same thing that the American soldiers were accused of doing in Vietnam. So I don't want to hear this talk about oh and that's not true. Blah blah blah. That's that's fucking bullshit. That's that's part of. of you know, criminality, power, uh, superpower invades a small country. They abuse that power. It's just automatic. That's what happens. Um, but the reason why Putin was never tried, or the FSB tried for false flags, or the Russian army tried for war crimes against Chechnya, or even in Africa, but definitely Chechnya at that time, not late 90s, Throughout the 2000s, it was because we, Russia was our ally at that time. You know, for all the people, uh, like the view who say, "Oh, we 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 miss George W. Bush. We don't want Donald Trump as president." Well, it was George W. Bush that said he looked up to, into Putin's eyes, and he saw um, whatever he said, hey, you know, uh, a nice gentleman or whatever you know, stupid shit he said. All right. If that's what you miss, then, <laughs> then, uh, yeah, have a nice life. I, I don't miss Bush at all. Definitely not a Trump supporter. But so what I wanted to say is, um, with with these war crime, known war crimes that Russia committed in Africa. Why would you defend Russian the, the Russian government? Why would you say that Putin? Uh, had a right to invade Ukraine. He, he didn't have a right. He did the um, the NATO kind of convinced him to invade or, or duped him to invade. Yes, I'm not I'm blaming NATO. NATO is to blame. But if I, if I give a gun to somebody, does that mean that person has to use the gun? No. So. Why are we using NATO as an excuse to allow, to make excuses for Putin invading uh, Ukraine? We shouldn't, we shouldn't make excuses for that. Nobody told Putin, nobody forced him. 
put a gun to Putin's head to tell him to invade Ukraine. Because it's all about territory and power. It had nothing to do with NATO, really. But we can't excuse what Putin did, regardless. And he is a war criminal. And the Russian military are all run by war criminals. You know, the political assassinations, as explained by a lot of these whistleblowers, authors who are all dead, mostly, unfortunately, the, 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 the ruling oligarchs, through their intermediaries, will, will, will send, will, will, you know, which will be the Russian mafia. They, they, they get the money, and then they, they hire a, mili- a former military Russian soldier or a current military Russian soldier to, to do the assassination. Or if not, a local gang member. But I know from what I've read that the military soldiers barely make any, a dime in, in the military in Russia. So that's another thing that you, a lot of you don't know. Is that the Russian soldiers do barely make a lot of money, so they get enticed to do uh, projects for the for the Russian mafia, including assassinations. Since they already know how to kill, this is what they do, and they get paid for it. That's the kind of country Russia is, and it's like like the United States back in the fifties and sixties, especially the sixties, where we 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 know that. John F. Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, and Martin Luther King Jr. were all assassinated by our government with the help of not only the military, the CIA, and, and, and certain fractions of law enforcement, but also the Costa Nostra, the Mafia. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of evidence that Carlos Marcelo was involved in all the, the, three, the three major assassinations of the, of the 60s, including the Martin Luther King. And of course, the, the witness, half of the witnesses that were killed. And, and so, yeah, so that's what I wanted to say. And so, yeah, so the Russian military, uh, you know, they, they do favors for the Russian Mafia. Um, so, it's a lot like the United States in the 60s. And, and so, I see a similarity in that. So, how can you defend the Russian government? You know, it's the same thing. You know what I'm saying? It's the same, it's the same, shit, same shit. So, I can never... As somebody who believes in humanity, somebody who believes in uh, human rights, I can never support the Russian government. And uh, you have to really think, look at all the evidence before you just go on YouTube or, or go on the YouTube comment section and just say whatever you want to say. Because, you know, as a progressive, I can never support any government. You know, a war crime is a war crime. You know, yes, the Ukraine. Ukrainian soldiers, they were doing things to their own people, but so have Russia and the Russian military. And, you know, people have their biases, but that's what they are. Their biases, they're not based on any, anything that's factual. So I can never support the Russian government. So please don't support the Russian government or defend the Russian government in the media. Because you you get no points for that. I don't support RT. RT, RT is a is a Russian propaganda, just like Fox News is U.S. propaganda. It's, it's the same thing. Right? It's just the same thing. So uh, that's all I wanted to say. I, I think I, I I said everything I wanted to say. Um, and that and that goes for the Chinese government too. I don't support the Chinese government. Um, they are very repressive. There's no freedom of speech in, in China. There's no freedom of speech in Russia, really. And the poverty in Russia is, is terrible. That's another thing I forgot to bring up. The poverty in Russia is bad, right? And um, with respect to China, though, it's like it's not even communist. It's like unchecked capitalism with like all these big condos being built. Half, most of them are still empty, just being rolls and rolls and moving people out. And 
if you speak out against the Chinese government, you're you're gonna you're gonna be paid a visit and you're gonna be in prison just for saying something. And that's not the way I want to live. And it's easy to just go to China and not say anything, but try to go to China and, and say something about the Chinese government and see what happens. You know, that's all I gotta say. You know, but that's all I have to say about that. I don't support the Russian government. I don't think anybody should defend the Russian government. This doesn't mean I want war. It just means that you have to look at war for what it is. War is not good versus evil. War is a battle over territory. That's all war is. A lot of people die. A lot of soldiers die. A lot of innocent people die. Women and children included. And that's why I'm against war. And that's why I'm against the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Just like I'm against the Ukrainian government. And I'm against the eight years civil war, and I'm against the CIA, uh, C- CIA coup, CIA back coup in Ukraine some years ago. Uh, so, yeah, and there's no excuse for defending the Russian government. There's no excuse at all. And um, so that's all I gotta say. Peace.